a large chair swiveled around to reveal a tiny, skinny guy. What? You think all Mafia bosses are tall, fat, bald, and wear gold rings? Sorry to disappoint you with my looks, but trust me, I am every bit as ruthless. Something about his steely gray eyes sent a shiver down my spine. I believed him. His name was Pierre Soufflé, which was obviously a lie. And the job he had for us was to steal a priceless painting from a museum and replace it with a fake. That's the painting? It's, um, tiny. What's your problem with tiny things and people? It's also kind of stupid. What is that? <laughs> a raccoon eating a cheeseburger? It's worth ten million dollars. So the joke's on you, dummy. Now, the owner of the painting has allowed the museum to borrow it for only three days. So we don't have a lot of time. Wouldn't it be easier to steal it from the owner's house? Everyone, look at Lady Einstein coming up with brilliant ideas. Why didn't we think of that ourselves? Happy to help. Of course we thought of that ourselves. Trust me, the museum is easier. Why choose us? It's a very stupid security measure, but the museum's floors are activated by pressure sensors at night. Anything above 55 kilograms and they go off. I haven't been able to find a boy who weighs less than that. Billy, get the weighing scale. Meredith weighed 52 kg, while I weighed 55.1. How is this possible? You eat so much more than I do. What can I say? I got all the good genes. Okay. You're out, fatty. Meredith, you're my leading lady. The plan was to enter the museum through its large air ducts, carrying the fake painting with us. We first had to make a stop in the security room and disable all the cameras and alarms. Then we'd crawl back through the ducts till we reach the exhibit area, and I'd lower Meredith down along with the painting so she could switch them out. As Meredith made it to the bottom, I dropped the painting to her, and she missed it, and we heard a loud crack. Oh my god, did you break the frame? Me? It's your fault. Who told you to throw it like that? I was expecting you to catch it, but what was I thinking? You made us lose the frisbee tournament in eighth grade because you're so bad at catching things, unless it's someone's boyfriend. Seriously? You were so distracted by that hot boy on the bleachers, your throwing skills were completely off. FYI, that boy was totally into me. Why are we even talking about frisbees and boys right now? You started it. No, I didn't. Okay, shut up. Let me think how to fix this. Are you trying to glue it together with your saliva? You got a better idea? Any idea would be a better idea than that. Look, it's a museum. They must fix broken, ancient things here all the time, right? I'm looking at the floor map, and there are some offices in the left wing. I'll go get some glue. It took me an hour to find glue and return to our spot, and I found Meredith eating a bowl of ramen. Where did you get that? I brought a packet of instant ramen with me, and you were taking forever, so I went to make it in the staff kitchen. There was someone's chicken sandwich in the fridge, so I used the meat from that. And there was also some tofu. And I added a dash of oyster sauce. I'm so happy you chose this moment in your life to become a gourmet chef. Just send the painting back up so I can fix it. I tried to fill in the crack as best I could, then sent it back down to Meredith, who took the real one off and put the fake one on the wall. But just as she started walking back, the whole floor lit up suddenly and a blaring sound went off. Oh my god, what's happening? I don't know. Is the painting heavier than the fake one? Just hurry up. We gotta get out now. I pulled up Meredith and the real painting and closed the opening in the ceiling seconds before security burst in. We crawled down the ducks and out of the building as fast as we could. We ran a few blocks down where Pierre's van was waiting for us, and we sped away. Oh, I would have preferred if you hadn't alerted all of New York about the break-in. Now I'll have to move this painting around with cops crawling all over the city. Ugh, never mind. Here's your check, and Claire, try to lose some weight. Au revoir. And without warning, we were dumped on a dark street. We scrambled to our feet, headed for the subway, and made it home. It was all over the news the next morning that someone had broken into the museum and switched off all of the security systems. But apparently, nothing had been stolen, except a chicken sandwich and a block of tofu from the staff kitchen. You ate the entire block? Hey, I'm not the one who needs to watch her weight. I do not need to... Ugh, whatever. Listen, I've been meaning to talk to you about something. It'll have to wait. I got a hair appointment. We'll talk over dinner? Yeah, sure. I was gonna tell Meredith that I wanted a break from this life, and I wasn't sure how she'd react. As I sat in a cafe later, I suddenly found a cute guy next to my table. Mind if I sit here? There are no other empty seats. I won't disturb you. 
I promise. We actually ended up talking for over an hour, and I found him sweet and charming. I'd love to meet you again if you're free. I don't live in New York, but I come every weekend. You come here for work? No, actually, I came to visit my mom who's admitted in the hospital here for a medical trial. She has some rare brain issue that sent her into a coma. Oh, I I'm sorry to hear that. How long has she been in a coma? Six years now. It's been the toughest thing I've ever dealt with. Actually, she was part of this other really promising clinical trial before, but that didn't work for her. He was in a hospital in Connecticut. As he kept talking, I suddenly felt like I was spinning around very fast, and I could hear my heartbeat in my ears. My chest felt heavy, and I could barely breathe. I don't know what I said to the boy, but I just ran out of there and didn't stop till I got to our hotel room. Hey, I was about to call you. What's wrong? Claire, are we in trouble? I am a terrible person. Hey, you're not that terrible, just a bit ugly. You don't have cops after you, do you? Meredith, I met someone. It's not a cop, is it? No, I met a random guy in a cafe, and his mom was in a clinical trial. I hope this gets interesting at some point. In a hospital in Connecticut. Oh my god, the same hospital mom was in? And the same trial? What a small world. No, it's not the same trial. It's a different hospital, too. Okay, I'm bored again. The coincidence made me interested for a bit. Meredith, his mom's been in a coma for six years. We did that to someone. Didn't you just say it's not the same trial? Yes, but for a few seconds, I thought it was the same trial. And I just realized for the first time today that we did something awful to someone out there. When we switched the patient files, we took away someone else's chance to get better. You realized this just now? Are you dumb or something? Of course that's what we did. I mean, I never really thought about it like this. It was just a name on a file. But meeting someone who's going through that with their mom for years, it just made it so real. We're really bad people. Not really bad, if you consider all the bad people in the world. Okay, look, we didn't have a choice. If I had to do something like that to save mom all over again, I'd do it in a heartbeat. Okay, so we did that to save mom, but what about everything else? We had a choice to not continue living this life, but we didn't stop, and I want to stop. What's the big deal, man? It's not like we're stealing from poor people. It doesn't matter who we steal from. It's not about them, it's about us and the people we've become. I don't want to be this person anymore. Look, just calm down. I'll get you a piña colada and everything will seem better. But I pushed her away angrily and she landed on the floor. She looked up at me, stunned. No, I am done. Meredith and I barely spoke over the next few days, and I had no idea what was going through her head. But I'd made my decision. I was gonna go home. I sent Freddie a text to say I'd be coming next week, and he called me back. Hey, I'm actually in New York with my parents for the weekend. Can we catch up? The moment I saw Freddie, I just burst into tears, and he hugged me tight. As we talked over dinner, he assured me that he'd talk to Meredith and try to make her come home too. We had just stepped out of the restaurant and walked two blocks down, when suddenly, a black van screeched to a halt beside us, and some men pulled us in, handcuffing and blindfolding us. When our blindfolds came off, I realized we were in Pierre's quarters, and I found Meredith there too. Uh, what's going on here? Welcome, welcome. We just gathered here to discuss a teensy weensy itsy bitsy issue. Now, Meredith, go ahead and tell them the moronic thing of titanic proportions that you just did. Apparently, Meredith had found her way to Pierre's headquarters and stolen the real painting from him. She had then tried to sell it to a buyer she'd arranged, and while the exchange was about to happen on the docks, the cops had showed up. Meredith had barely managed to escape, but the buyer and the painting were in police custody. The police didn't let it get out in the news, but they knew the real painting had been stolen and replaced with a fake. They were probably watching every dock airport and train station to see if someone would try and move it out. And your sister practically handed it to them. What were you thinking? It's your whole quitting the biz talk that made me do it. I did it for us so we could sell the painting and retire to Bora Bora for good. And what the heck is Freddy doing here? Hi guys, I'm Freddy, old friend. Nice to meet you. Not terrified at all. You made me lose a fortune. And you double-crossed me. And Pierre does not take betrayal well. 
Haley! Sam! Yes, sir! You know what to do. Uh, boss? I'm not really sure how I feel about punching a girl. Yeah, boss. I am not really comfortable with this. Maybe we can just punch the boy. I'm not really a boy. I used to be a girl. Ask Claire and Meredith. We practically grew up like sisters. Please don't hurt him. He has nothing to do with this. Silence! You buffoons! I didn't say hurt anyone yet. I just wanted you to threaten them. But of course, you're useless. Ammo to myself. Torture Harry and Sam after this meeting. Now, get lost. Then, Pierre shifted his cold gaze to me. That painting is everything to me. And I want it back. And now the only way we can get it is from the owner himself. You, Claire, <gasps> will be executing this mission. The heir of that painting is a young, charming millionaire. And you will get to know him. Become his girlfriend, keys, cuddle, yada yada. You need to earn his trust completely, so he lets you into his life and his home. Then, when the time is right, you will steal the painting from a high security vault inside his house and bring it back to me. You will do this if you care about your moon sister and this girl slash boy and his family and your mother and your stupid husband and your old neighborhood. What? What if I fail? I don't think you want the answer to that. But once you succeed, I'll give you two enough to go to Boa Boa and never return. I'd be ecstatic to never set eyes on you annoying girls again. I had my eyes on the target from across the street. As soon as I saw him walk towards the cafe, I headed for the entrance. Just as he opened the door, I bumped straight into him, spilling coffee all over his shirt. Oh God, I'm so sorry. I wasn't looking. I'll pay for the dry cleaning. His arm rested gently on mine. Hey, it's okay. It was an accident. I looked up into his bright green eyes. <laughs> In fact, you're the one who's without a coffee now. Can I get you a new one? <laughs> sure, I'd like that. Can we also start over? Hi, I'm Christina. Hello, I'm Eric. 